and about her cancer diagnosis. The future? It's season two, episode 141. Kate Middleton has cancer. If you looked at my previous episodes, I had predicted that Charles had cancer and she and he had a very rare blood type that only she could match and she was donating lots of bone marrow. And so they were taking extracting marrow from her bones and they were giving it to Charles, but they could only do a little at a time and he needed so much and it took so long to heal because she like weighs 82 pounds. I thought she was donating like certain cells or certain kind of bone marrow, all the like great medical treatments that they only keep that they keep secret from normal people like us and only save for super rich, important people. That's why Mick Jagger is still alive and fucking 18 year old girls. Keith Richards, he'll live to be 130. Why? Because he's got the same hookup that the British government does for the royal family. Well, we're going to have to we're going to have to do this procedure. Oh, has anyone ever done this before? Yeah, we've done it about 30,000 times. Well, I've never heard of it. Well, it's because it's only for the people we don't want to die, Miss Princess. <laughs> well, it's only for the people we don't want to die, Princess Middleton. Now, you just got to get down on your knees, give it a little tug first. That's the rules. Do you want to die or do you want to live and give me wank a tug? So, can you imagine if Prince Charles and Kate died within like three years? And then all of a sudden, like, Prince William is like King William. And now all of a sudden, he's lost his mom when he was little. He loses his wife in her 40s, loses his dad all within three years. And now he's like a single king of three kids. This is all setting up for Charlotte to become queen when she's like 27. Very similar to her great grandma. <laughs> it's funny how life works. Anyways. I guess get better. That's like the kind of thing to say. So you can like this video if you want Kate Middleton to live. God bless you, America. It's unstoppable. An electric bracket loaded with contenders. That's our move. Watch meteorologist Cheryl Scott on Eyewitness News. And finally tonight, we leave you with something more from Princess Kate's stunning announcement about her cancer diagnosis. The future queen using her platform to inspire others. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. Amen to that. Thank you, Kate. That's not no for shit. This no Catch shit. Our full episodes on Hulu. We'll see. I told, I told you us Britons be very smart and intelligent. These, in whatever form. I told you us Brits have crazy. Please. I told you us Brits have that intelligence. Have intelligence. Are very intelligent. For everyone facing this disease, it's in all, whatever. Well, no, I told you all. I told you us Britons are very intelligent. These, in whatever form. I told you us Britons are very intelligent. I told you us Britons are very intelligent. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Form to inspire others. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. Amen to that. That's Nightline for this evening. Catch our full episodes on Hulu. We'll see you right back here same time on Monday. Fuck you. The company, America. And rest in peace, Kate. And safe weekend. For this evening. Catch our full episodes on Hulu. We'll see you right back here same time on Monday. Fuck England and go. Have a good and safe weekend. Alone. Amen to that. That's Nightline for this evening. Catch our full episodes on Hulu. Fuck England and go. Back here same time on Monday. Fuck England and go. Opening America. Have a good and safe weekend. Rest in peace, Kate.
Amen to that. That's Nightline for this evening. You can catch our full episodes on Hulu. We'll see you right back here same time on Monday. Fuck you. Company America. And don't rest in peace this weekend. No, 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 no. You can just fast forward to the show. I'm going to do this for another hour. Hulu, we'll see you right back here same time on Monday. Rest in peace, Kate Middleton. Yeah. Have a good and safe... Don't die. Amen to that. That's Nightline for this evening. Catch our full episodes on Hulu. We'll see you right back here same time on Monday. Let's go, America. America. Have a good... And don't die. Again. Hello. Amen to that. Amen to that. That's Nightline for this evening. Catch our full episodes on Hulu. Go fuck off. Back here same time on Monday. Boo Britain and go. America. And try not to die this. And safe weekend. Dun, 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 well, my temperature's rising out of my head. Oh, yeah, my favorite sisters. The quads. <laughs> American Idol. New Sunday on ABC. It's live with Kelly and Mark. March 22nd, 2024. Weekend, look out, weekend, cause here I come. come. Because okay. weekends were. Yes, we're the only two people five. that know that song. Fog machines and. Laser rays. <laughs> That's a good tune. Debbie Deb, you should download it today. It's a great song. Um, so <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, people bought during the, the pandemic, yeah. people bought uh, panic bidets. People <laughs> bought bidets during the pandemic. Do you know what a bidet is? I know there's a lot of Americans here in the audience. <laughs> yeah, Are they the, 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 the toilets that multitask for you? Yes, a lot of... <laughs> Yes, a lot of yes. The seat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have one of those. We have one of those. Yeah. We originally installed it for my mother-in-law, who cannot live without a bidet. And then uh, when my mom was staying with us, she absolutely hated it. So Mark played a prank on her. Well, she went on and on about the. She said it reminded her of an outhouse. I'm like, yes. this is a fancy. We were like, toilet. this is the opposite of an outhouse. Yes, yeah, very fancy. She said it makes noise, it does things. Right. <laughs> and so I got one of those uh, little motion activated recorders. So when she would come in and sit down, it would it would talk to her yes. too. <laughs> it said, "Hello, Essie." <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Would you be doing number one or number two? Just sit back and we'll do all the rest. We appreciate that. And we, we I, I knew she was going to the bathroom, so we kind of snuck down there. We followed her down, down there, there covertly. And, covertly. And all you can hear is, oh my God. Oh my God. Our mom's, our mom's 
moms are so polar opposite. So opposite. They are so opposite in everything. Like yeah. what his mom finds to be a necessity, my mom <laughs> finds to be an absolute nightmare. Nightmare. Um, I do like the ones that you can push the button and the seats go up, the seats go down. You don't have to touch the seats. Oh, yeah. No, I but like I like the one that we had in our fancy hotel in Las Vegas yes. where you walk in and it knows you're there and it goes, <laughs> that would have freaked my mom out. Right. She would have died with right. that. And I, I like the warm seat. Oh, oh yeah. That's luxury. Luxury. <laughs> luxury. <laughs> luxury. <laughs> luxury. I remember uh, I went to um, grammar school with a girl whose parents had... Uh, they had a toilet and a bidet. And I was like, they have, I told my parents, they have two toilets, a, hi, a his and a her. <laughs> I, didn't under, I didn't understand. My yeah. dad's like, that's not a toilet, that's a bidet. And I was like, what's a bidet? And he goes, it's like an English toilet, which still didn't answer any <laughs> questions. Answered no questions. I just was like, that's yeah. like such a dad answer. <laughs> Hey, do you remember the other day when I told you about the cicadas are coming? Yeah, I know. And you said we hear about this all the time. We it's do, every we hear year. About it all but this year is going to be a 17 year and a 13 year. They converge. It's going to be truly. It's going to it's going to be really really big. But it's worse than you think. <laughs> <laughs> a new study reveals that cicadas can discharge urine with far more force than their size would suggest. <laughs> Get your bidets ready. <laughs> the jets of urine that cicadas produce, the research shows, jets of urine have a velocity up to three meters oh. per second. What? That's the fastest of all animals assessed in the in in the new work include mammals like elephants and horses. Well, I've seen horses pee <laughs> faster than a horse. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, so it's worse. It's worse. It's going to be when you're out there, you're listening to the nice... That's like a fire hose. The rhythmic tones of the cicadas, and you're out there just under the tree. Is it raining? It's raining. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> just something to ponder. <laughs> you know... <laughs> I don't even know how to segue from that to this. Segue, do it. I'm going to try. I'm going to pivot. This is what you call a television pivot. Who here? This is. I'm going to take an internal poll. Who here is a belly sleeper? You sleep on your stomach. Mm. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah. all right. Now, now I see more hands. Now people okay. were they were afraid, and now they're like, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Okay. okay. Well, they are saying that that position wreaks havoc on your health. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> more good news. Yeah, people who sleep on their stomachs are more prone to various health issues. Uh, if you already have neck and back problems, sleeping in this position is almost guaranteed to make it worse. Um, you all seem like you already know that. <laughs> Um, sleeping on your stomach can cause migraines, pinched nerves, and other neurological issues. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a side sleeper. I think you, sleep, size, on, you slide. sleep on your back, then you, <laughs> then you, you snore. roll over onto your side, yeah, and then you go back to your back. You're like you, you like, a, like a like a rotisserie chicken, like a rotisserie, <laughs> like a half. A like a half, a half a chicken. You never make it all the way around. You just yeah. sort of go to one side, back, other side, back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think it's, you know, you, you talk about the snoring. I think it's actually Chewy that snores. Oh, that's really nice. yeah. Chewy does in fact snore. She snores. But it's not her snoring. Yeah. It's your snoring that has. What is it, what do you, what is it called when two singers are, they harmonize? <laughs> I wouldn't call it a harmony. <laughs> According to my brain, I'm the one who's dying. <laughs> my aura ring gave me a sleep score that was like. You're dying. Not only was it like a 47. Mm, that's okay. That's usually you get bad, high scores. But my H. What is it? H heart HRV? Yeah. Heart rate variability. Yeah. Heart rate variability. Heart rate variability. 
was so low that it was like on the red. It was red. Yeah. And I know it's because I was like. You literally- woke up before I went to before you woke up. You woke back. You you slept and then you woke up. You said you took a you took a little nap to the show we we're watching. And then you woke up. Well, you were asleep first. Right. And I fell asleep. And then your snoring woke me up. And I said, "Are you still watching this?" And you went, "Yes." No, no, I, was, I had been watching. I had been watching for like twenty minutes by the time you said that. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, can you move your toes individually? Can she can? Yes, I can. You can. Yes. All right. Toe spacers can give a leg up up to fitness. So people work out. They take care of their biceps. They take care of their chest and all their legs. They should, you should be taking care of your feet. Yeah. 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 Better take care, take care of those feet. Yeah. I like those toe spacers. Ballet lessons. Yeah, so my toes get to work out all the time. Yep, you should be able to um, better spread for balance. The foot study, uh, the foot should act like a tripod. Yeah, my feet with are, weight. My feet Even these two between spread. the center of the heel and the ball of the big toe. So work on your feet. I don't know what that means. I don't know. You know, when I take my sh- when I take my shoes off. And I unfurl my feet. Yeah. People have their breath sucked away <laughs> because my feet are basically, um, I don't know, like they're wide. Du- they're wide. Right. They're very wide. You'd have been building they're pyramids p- back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> when you were yes. born, they said, "Yep, she's gonna build. Py- she's gonna carry the rocks up the hill." <laughs> you and I would have been together. Yeah. <laughs> like you know. But my my feet are way wider than yours. Yours are very mine are, mine are wide. Yours are very wide. You know, I have to get my from soccer. I have that arthritis in the big toe. Are you going to have another voluntary surgery? No, no. It's they, he says I need to have it. He says it's getting it's grinding now. They need to they need to go in there and it's they need to fix it. So you know it's going to. I happen. smell I, a tape piece. I smell a tape piece. <laughs> Do you remember the last time you did that? Yes. Mark was so funny because. First of all, he was, so when he comes out of surgery, I've been sitting there for hours waiting for him to wake up. No surprise, it took him a long time to wake up. And, and. That was a good nap. <laughs> and he said, my wife is being very mean to me. And I, and I'm literally just sitting there reading a magazine, looking at her and I go, I'm not. And he goes, she doesn't know what this feels like. She's never had surgery before. And I looked at her and I said, I've had three C-sections. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did yeah, not but... have eight stitches in my toe, but I have had about 8,000 stitches in my abdominal. You know, they, say, they say foot pain is, oh, is yeah, very, yeah. It's very painful. Mm-hmm. Very painful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, why you hate bringing your lunch to work? Oh. U.S. workers who are back in the office at least a few days a week say that lunch has taken on a magic hour of quality. Instead of diligently slipping a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or whatever, bringing their lunch to work, they choose to go out for lunch. Break up mm-hmm. the monotony of the day. Bring your lunch to work. Oh. U.S. workers who are Sorry. back in the office. I'm sorry, what the fuck is going on? I've had three (laughs) (laughs) C-sections. I did not have eight stitches in my toe, but I have had about 8,000 stitches in my hairy vagina. It is is very, it's very painful. (laughs) Very, very painful. (laughs) stitches in my toe, but I have had about 8,000 stitches in my vagina toe. that I call foot pain is, oh, is yeah, very yeah. Exper- Oh, man. I did yeah, not but- have eight stitches in my toe, but I have had about 8,000 stitches in my vagina that I call Coco Loco. Foot pain is, oh, is yeah, very, yeah. it's very painful. Very, very painful. <laughs> Let's see if I could nail this. Two voices on one mute. Interesting. 
not have eight stitches in my toe, but I have had about 8,000 stitches in my vagina that I call Coco Loco. Vagina is, oh, is yeah, very, yeah. It's very painful. Very, very painful. <laughs> um, why do you hate bringing your lunch to work? Oh. oh. U.S. I think I'm just going to have to. Miss Coco. That's what I call it. Miss Coco. Bitches in my abdominal. You know, they, say, they say foot pain. Right. That's why your stomach is all like nasty and wrinkled and looks like an 85 year old man who's had his face burned several times over the decades. He's never had surgery before. <laughs> that's, why, that's why Kelly Ripa's stomach looks like Jay Leno's face. Well, and then I looked like at her that? and I said, I've had three C sections. <laughs> Don't worry, Jay Leno likes that. Don't worry, Jay Leno will like that. She doesn't know what this feels like. She's never had surgery before. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, I've had three C-sections. I did not have eight stitches in my toe, but I have had about 8,000 stitches in my vagina that I call Miss Coco vaginal. Pain is, oh, is yeah, very, yeah. it's very painful. Very, very painful. <laughs> <laughs> um, why do you hate bringing your lunch to work? Oh. U.S. workers who are back in the office at least a few days a week say that lunch has taken on a magic hour of quality. Instead of diligently slipping a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or whatever, bringing their lunch to work, they choose to go out for lunch, break mm -hmm. up with the monotony of the day. Mm -hmm. like the off how, about, what, how about you guys upstairs in the production office? What do you guys uh, do? I eat at my desk. You eat and your desk. A lot of the staff- For maximum the, efficiency. Exactly. They go to the cafeteria, but they bring it back. Oh, yeah, so the, we usually the ABC try to, cafeteria. Yeah, exactly. Not Art. Our, Art is a gentleman. He has a real uh, lunch. Art goes out. Oh. Yeah, that's yes. right. Pomodoro? Yes. Anywhere I can hide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do it because yeah. you want to you get, have a, a, a time a break. Out. Yes, because yeah. you're a gentleman. You're a human. It's a good man. place to catch up uh, in the train. Civilized. So. Yes, be civilized. Um, we have a huge show today. Lucas Gage. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we have Tyler on the show. And Live's Cooking School Week wraps up with a lesson in sauces from Chef Eric Repair, my French cousin. Yeah. You know, Eric told me that ever since I have, you know, misrepresented that he's my French cousin, because Ripa, Repair, Repair sounds like the French version of yeah. Ripa to me. He, people come in and believe that we are related. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Really? Yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> they think that I somehow work at Le Bernadette somewhere. Uh, such a great restaurant. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. such a treat. All right. It's the reason you all showed up today. It's time to play. <laughs> Hello to Lauren Beauvais from Huntington, New York, who watches the show on WABC. Good morning, Lauren. Did I mispronounce your name? Is it Bove or Beauvais? It's Beauvais. Beauvais. Good morning, Kelly Moore. I got it right. Beauvais. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. I like it. You want to show Lauren, you know how this game works. No, I don't. I this do. game works. You, we, you've given us two statements. One is true, one is false. I have 60 seconds to decide which is See, the truth. See, now the caller's got to know to give two options that aren't searchable on the internet. Because if you say, I ran the New York Marathon, you know, or I ran a marathon, I ran the New York Marathon in 20 degree weather, he could just Google what year was the New York Marathon 20 degrees. And then he'll ask her and see, you know, if she gets it right or wrong. Because if she gets it wrong, then he knows. And that's a way of tilting the odds in his favor. So you got to ask you personal questions, that things that you can't look up. We, you've given us two statements. One is true. One is false. I have 60 seconds to decide which is the truth. And if you stump me, you'll win this. Oh. And that. <laughs> All right, here are Lauren's two statements. I took a photo with Mark at a fundraiser. Okay. Or my first job was selling pickles. 
All right. Where... Oh, wait, so here's the thing. The fundraiser with Mark, this is going to be a very much all or nothing because I'm assuming – well, here's the thing. This could be smart because obviously you can't lie about the fundraiser because if you do, if he remembers the fundraiser, he's going to ask you questions, so you better remember. And if you do remember specific details, it's going to be very odd if that's a lie and you never did take a photo with him at a fundraiser, yet you know all the details of the fundraiser. And even if you looked up the fundraiser online and you wrote, took notes and you're reading all the facts – so he could say, wow, that's really true. That must be right. And then you trick him. That's very hard to find a certain fundraiser's information from probably years ago, maybe even decades ago. And on top of that, it's still, it's very hard to pull off. Now, if he doesn't remember the fundraiser, which he might not because he's as dumb as a fucking, you know, a cardboard box wrapped up around used dull fucking razor blades that were used to slice the throats of bats because they put guano in Kelly's abdomen during surgery. So I just don't see her picking that as the as a lie. Unless it's something where it's like she really met him at a restaurant after a fundraiser or there's some weird twist. I met you. I didn't or or I met you. Oh, here's the thing. This might be great because she might have met him at a fundraiser at the VFW in North Dakota, and she, and, and, and she knows all the details because she was there and he remembers. But the lie is that I took a photo. I bet you she did not take a photo. So if he asks her what was the fundraiser, she says all this stuff, and then say, what what did the photo look like? Like, what were, what was I wearing? What, or something. If he could somehow ask her that, because if he's oblivious, he's just asking about the fundraiser. She's hoping that all he does is ask about the fundraiser. She tells him about the fundraiser. He says, I remember that. I'll say the truth is the fundraiser. Turns out it was a lie. Her first job was selling pickles because the lie, the truth is, is that she was selling pickles because the lie is the fundraiser because the dishonest part is I took a photo. She might have met him at a fundraiser but never took a photo. Or she took a photo with him at an event but the event was not a fundraiser. It was not an event that was raising funds to support a charity. It might have just been, it might have been, and don't say if it's a place where he's signing autographs or something, that that's a fundraiser because he's raising money for his pockets. That doesn't count. I'm going to say that it is true that her first job was selling pickles. Although she could have sold cucumbers or vegetables and she's just changing it to pickles. This is a very good two options. I'm going to give this girl lots and lots of cumulingus. I'm going to say the truth is that her first job was selling pickles. No questions, no advantage, no searching on the internet. And the lie is that she took a photo with Mark at a fundraiser because she never took a photo. And if he asks about the photo, it might be very easy for her to make shit up because he won't remember taking a picture with her because she doesn't know who this girl is. And he, she, he, he took thousands of pictures with fucking a uh, bunch of weird ass women over the years. It meant because of I his, because of his job. Thanks to Kelly. I took a photo with Mark at a fundraiser. Okay. Or my first job was selling pickles. All right. Where did this photo take place and when? Um, it was at, I think the place was called Lavo. It was for a fundraiser for Friends Factor. It was a nonprofit that my cousin was involved with. Oh. Um, and you were there. Do you remember other that? people and you were nice enough to let me take a selfie with you. Do you, what, was all what year was this? Like, Please tell Kelly, I love her so. <laughs> Which, uh, what, year was this? what year was this? What year was this? You were 11? Uh, no, no, no. 2011, 2011 I and, think. And where was where was this? What state? What city? Minnesota. It was in New York City. Lavo. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> he's, he's so funny. <laughs> he plays. Could be right. 2011. He plays up his uh, stupidity. Is it a good picture? Um, it's a little blurry. It's a little but blurry. Mark, it's good enough. It made me happy. All right, that's a lie. Pickles and, and lie. how you were a pickle dealer. I was a pickle dealer back in that was that was in the nineties. Um, I was in high school and I sold pickles at the Comex flea market on yeah. Long Island. Yeah, love pickles. Mm -hmm. They were good pickles. I love pickles so much. I'm going to tell you what. What? Lauren, I think when you're in high school, you were wheeling and dealing the, the pickles. <laughs> Are you talking about pickles? I think that's what your first, yeah, your first job was selling pickles. Uh, True. I really wanted the 
mother. Oh, uh, right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because he don't. Yeah. Both of us won. Damn. I'm like. I'm like 29 for 41. I didn't ask you for a picture. Yeah, that fundraiser. What the fuck did I tell you? I remember in 2011, I was off the soap then, so I'm not sure if I would have been doing those type of, like, Well, she said you were there. She was just too scared to ask you for a picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. She never said that you were there promoting the television show, or you weren't there as, you know, oh, Mateo from All My Children. You know, it wasn't something you were doing because you're on the show. It was just a fundraiser that you were doing, or it was a fundraiser that you just happened to be at. I don't know, but got to pay attention. But I told you, didn't I say the lie? She was at the fundraiser was going to be true, but the lie was that she didn't take a photo. <laughs> Fucking eat my ass. That's what you do, baby. And all it took was logic and common sense. Simple logic and common sense. I'm smart and you're not. I'm from Hollywood. Silly. You silly normies. Simple logic and common sense. Blow my balls. Oh! Really wanted the mug work, but you're right. Yeah, that, that fundraiser. I didn't ask you for a picture. Yeah, that fundraiser didn't sound like a, I couldn't remember in 2011. I was off the soap then, so I'm not sure if I would have been doing those type of, like, Well, things. she said you were there. She was just too scared to ask you for a picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, yeah. You should have. You should have. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you didn't win the mug. I'm sorry. Although you did, I thought that was true when you said the picture was blurry. I was like, because Mark probably took the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded plausible. I was like, no, that sounds like it's pretty much true. Listen, you didn't win the mug t shirt, but you still have a chance to win a valuable trip. It's time for Warm It Up Travel Trivia. <laughs> Here's a great trip, Ooh. a trip for two to the Buccaneer in St. Croix. Seven Ooh. days and six nights in a deluxe oceanfront room. It includes three meals daily. Tell her, Mark. All three of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's a prize valued at $9,500. You have 20 seconds and only one guest. Good luck, Lauren. All right, Lauren, here we go. We've had Megan Trainer on the show. What did we say Megan's husband... What did we say Megan's husband was promoting when he first appeared His prostitution online? bar. His uh, sex bar. Five kids? Yes. Yes. Five yes. kids. So congratulations. You and a guest will enjoy seven days and six nights at the Buccaneer in St. Croix. Founded in the 17th century and family run for generations, the Buccaneer in St. Croix is both historic and modern, blending old world charm with warm hospitality and the amenities expected by today's traveler. The Buccaneer is the premier destination resort for golf, tennis, water sports, weddings, honeymoons, and family vacations. Your prize is valued at approximately $9,500. Thank you so much. Way to go, Lauren. Good for you. Thank you. And I just want to say, Kelly, how much I love your podcast, too. Oh, thank you. I've been your show forever, but the podcast is great. It's excellent. Thank you very much. People, don't you know, don't you know what about Spy Kids? It's the movie that Jessica Alba did with all those kids. The dorky girl that I think is dead, and the little boy with the red head that now is having sex with Megan Trainer, making kids. They're not spy kids. They're just music kids. They're touring. They're netballs and training. Shake that body for me. Asia Resort for golf, tennis, water sports, weddings, honeymoons, and family vacations. Your prize is valued at approximately $9,500. Way to go, Lauren. Good for you. Thank you. And I just want to say, Kelly, I'm I would love to have Kamalingus on you. You're so forever, but the podcast is great. It's excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. 
Way to go, Lauren. Good for you. Thank you. And I just want to say, Kelly, how much I love your for bringing Oh, oh you thank you. Your show forever with the oh, podcast. Thank you, though. Thank you. Thank you. Good dollar. Thank you so much. Way to go, Lauren. Good for you. Thank you. And I just want to say, Kelly, how much I love your, your small breasts. Too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So forever, but the podcast is it's great. Exactly. Thank you very much. Appreciate oh, it. All right. Now much. you get. To... Oh, Lauren, good for you. Thank you. And I just want to say, Kelly, how much I love your small titties. Oh, thank you. Your show forever, but the podcast is great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Now you get to make the day of a lucky member of our studio audience. Approximately $9,500. Thank you so much. Way to go, Lauren. Good for you. Thank you. And I just want to say, Kelly, how, how much you want to suck yourself. <laughs> Valued at approximately $9,500. Thank you so much. Way to go, Lauren. Good for you. Thank you. And I just want to say, Kelly, how much you look like Gelman. Oh, thank you. Thank you so forever, but the podcast is great. It's excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate oh, it. All right. Now much. you get to make the day of a lucky member of our studio audience who will receive a Broomba vacuum cleaner from iRobot. So please pick a number between 1 and 123. Three. 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 <laughs> So this is where I dance, just like the dancer, and I mimic them, and you get to judge me and rate me on a scale of 1 to 100 on how accurate I am. <laughs> that sounds impossible. I was like, well, that sounds like it's pretty much true. Listen, you didn't win the Marvin t-shirt, but you still have a chance to win a valuable trip. It's time for Warm It Up Travel Trivia. Professional. All right, Deja, spin that wheel to see if we can win Lauren a prop. Oh, yeah. You got to move it and move it. Your body. Every night is a watch party. New customers spend $5 to get $200 in bonus bets if you win. Bet all the stars and all the friends. Bet all the stars and all the friends. Tell them that they get paid instantly. Only on FanDuel. New customers bet five dollars and get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if you win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back, everyone. Guess what? Guess what? On Monday's show, Carol Burnett will be here. We also begin a week-long preview of the New York Auto Show. Oh, I love auto. Guess what? On Monday's show, Carol Burnett. No fucking way. <clears throat> God. Well, tell her to leave her house now. It's going to take her a few days to get to the studio and walk up the stairs. We also begin a week long preview of the New York Auto Show. Oh, I love Auto Show Week. All right, get ready, everyone. He is a rising star known for his role in Euphoria and the White Lotus. Now he stars opposite Jake Gyllenhaal in the new action remake Roadhouse. Please welcome to the show, Lucas Gage. <laughs> Lucas, 
Lucas, you know, we are such fans of yours. Oh, that thank I was you. like, no, Lucas has been on our show like <laughs> We know him. We know him. Oh, He's wow. been on our show many times. You've been in our living room. You've oh, been in our you. television. Yeah, many you guys are in mine. It's oh, so nice to meet you. Such a good looking couple. Oh, what yeah. the hell? Oh, God. I did. I grew up in San Diego. Yeah. Beautiful place Beautiful. to grow up. You're the youngest of four boys. I am. So you're are you the favorite of the family? For because, sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I'm like by far my mom's favorite. Yeah. Um she'll never admit it, but we know it. Yeah, right. You know, when I first saw that you were coming and I looked at this the guest list, I thought we were getting Lucas Cage. I, when I first saw the guest list for this episode last week, I thought we had I thought we were getting Luke Cage. So I was all prepared for the actor that played Luke Cage in the Marvel series. And then after that, he said, no, it's not it's not him. She said the actor's real name. Who I don't remember. And then I thought, oh, and then I thought it was Lucas Haas. So I'm I'm, I'm expecting the kid with the very skinny kid, the, the anorexic kid with the big nose that was in that movie about getting molested by the priest. And she corrected me again. And then she said, it's Lucas Cage. And I said. Who the fuck is Lucas Gage? And then she had to show me a bunch of clips. I fell asleep like two minutes into the first clip. But I do recognize your face. It was a lot skinnier back then. Have you been like eating like trans fats? Oh. Been on our show many times. You've been in our living room. Our you've been oh, in you. our television. Yeah, many you guys times. are in mine. And, oh. so and I... you've also been in our bedroom several times, but Mark doesn't know it. Wink, wink. Nice to meet you. Such a good-looking couple. Oh, I'm like, yeah. what the hell? All right, you grew up in San Diego. I did. I grew up in San Diego. Yeah. Beautiful place Beautiful. to grow up. You're the youngest of four boys. I am. So you're? Are you the favorite of the family? For because, sure. Yeah. For sure. I'm like by sexual. Mom's favorite. Yeah. Um, she'll never admit it, but we know it. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I grew up in San Diego. Uh, youngest of four boys and uh, raised by a single mom. I don't know how she did it, but she's uh, incredible. Yeah, she's incredible. So, um, are your uh, are your older brothers? Are they in the entertainment mm -hmm. industry? No, not at all. We we have a firefighter, we got a mechanic, we got a poker dealer. Wow. We're, we're all over the Amazing. place. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. How did, yeah, yeah. how did you get into it? How did you get into it? I have no idea. Really? <laughs> no, I just watched a bunch of movies growing up and TV shows and. I, I just became obsessed with it. There was a time in sixth grade where I just refused to go to school and my mom somehow let me stay home and watch horror movies all day with her. I don't know why she let me do that. You, I'll tell you why, because you were the favorite. I was the favorite, yeah. It's true. Favorite. She wanted yeah, you I was around. Speaking of your mom, that, kid, that unforgettable scene in White Lotus. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. God. What, did she, what did your mom have to say about that? Oh, she loved it. She didn't yeah. care. She was like, go for it. You know, I think um, my mom's really cool and understanding about that kind of thing. So yeah. cool. she just says I have the cutest butt in Hollywood too. So, <laughs> so like, your your friends talked you into attending a White Lotus themed party. That's I awesome. Know. I know. Um, did you know it going in? So when you say your brother's a poker dealer, is that your way of saying he's a con artist, criminal record? <laughs> <laughs> so like, your your friends talked you into attending a White Lotus. Themed party. That's I awesome. Know. I know. Um, did you know it going in that it was a White Lotus theme party, or did you I discover did. it? No, I did. I just thought other cast members were going to show up. Oh. Like as a surprise, I, I was told there was going to be other one. There, I was the only one who showed up. From the right. Cast. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah. So you came. I'm assuming in. Oh. In character. Oh. Gosh. <laughs> so everybody's in costume as yeah. White Lotus characters. Molly and Shannon, then, Jennifer Coolidge. Right. And yep. you're just there as you're in as with myself, your face. Yourself. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I did that. I did it. <laughs> You're a good sport. I was a good sport, yeah. yeah. So I hear, I also understand that you are a wedding crasher, but like not yes. just a regular wedding crasher. Mm -hmm. You crash celebrity weddings. It was an accidental wedding crash. I did not know it was Paris Hilton's wedding. Oh my God. I know. So I show up in like a t-shirt to her wedding and I just walk in and I'm the only person not in a suit. Nobody told me. They just said, come to Paris's it was her after party for her wedding. Everyone's in a suit celebrating her marriage. It was, right. I was mortified. Um, luckily, we became friends after there, after that. Your friend Andy, he yes. outed me on uh, Watch What Happens Live to her. <laughs> and then we became friends, though. She called Wait, me the she, next she day. she called you? Yeah, she called me the next day. She's like, you crashed my wedding? How did I not see you there? 
<laughs> invited me over. That's a good party. It was a good party. If it you had crashed our wedding, we would be like <sighs> Lucas Gage. Is I wish. I wish. Yeah. I wish those yeah, yeah, those. Right. <laughs> All right. It's what's your race? Lucas tells us. It was like working with his You give, you give, and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get unlimited data. You get America's most reliable 5G network. You get a Samsung Galaxy A14 on them. And you are two doors down. Oh, no, I'm here for the free phone. Yeah. Turn your tax refund into a U-fund. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line. Find us at straighttalk.com. What's this? Less for pepper. Do you keep dog food in your fridge? It's not dog food. It's fresh pepper. Real meat, real veggies. It's dog food. <laughs> It's not dog food, it's food food. Hepatitis C, don't just treat it, crush it with Maverick. Conquer it with Maverick. Cure it with Maverick. Maverick cures all types of hep C. In only eight weeks, the virus multiplies daily and can damage the liver over time. Maverick stops hep C and cures it. If you've had hepatitis B, it may flare up and cause serious liver problems during and after treatment. Tell your doctor if you've had hep B, a liver or kidney transplant, other liver problems, HIV, other medical conditions, and all your medicines. Do not take Maverick with Atazanavir or Rifamin. Report right away yellow skin, stomach pain or swelling, confusion and bleeding or bruising. Hep C, crush Maverick. Call for it. Cure it in only eight weeks. See hep C gone with Maverick. Ask your doctor about Maverick. Abby could help you save. It's tempty. One shot makes you a suit for 24 hours. U.S. Waterproofing has built a reputation for providing exceptional service and peace of mind. Because when we're called to fix it. Da-da, Emma Harley Davidson. I don't recognize this kid from White Lotus. I want to say if it's with Molly Shannon, that would have been season two, right? No, season one. Season one in Hawaii. So I don't remember. Does anyone know what Lucas, what character Lucas Gage played? Because it wouldn't have been Molly Shannon's son. It would have been like, you know what it was? It's a worker. I think he all you know who he was? He was the worker. In, he, he was the worker in White Lotus that was doing ketamine with the creepy mustache porno general manager of the White Lotus that they were having sex with. He was the straight guy. He was the straight kid that was like an 18-year-old or something that um the guy got gave free drugs to the general manager did and then uh blew him. What are you doing? What the fuck you doing? A better basement starts with us. Okay, let's relax. A better basement starts with us. Are you talking about my butthole? In full in one year. U.S. waterproofing. A better basement starts with us. This guy got a knife under his shirt. Porn takes it out. He just took a big step back, pop him in the face. Of course. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wait to see the action remake Roadhouse. You know, did you see the original? Have you seen the original? Of course. No, of course I have. I have to be honest. I, I mean, it was before you were born. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I watched it when I got the audition. Okay. Sure, yeah. But what a classic, iconic movie that original is. Oh, my God. Patrick Swayze is truly like movie star of all time my god yeah, yeah. yeah. Patrick Swayze. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. He's great. He's he's such a lovely, lovely person and also a person I looked up to growing up. I could recite Donnie Darko from the days <laughs> my mom let me stay home from school and watch movies. But yeah, just being in a, a scene with him, that was surreal to go toe to toe with Jake John. And then Conor McGregor's <laughs> yeah. Yes. Film debut, acting yeah. debut. Yeah, like, what was that like? Because it, well, he's been here on the show. Has he? Yeah, he's yeah. great. Yeah, but he's, he's great, great, but it definitely, like, you, you're like, okay, yes. this is a scary guy. Yeah. Even though he's, like, really sweet and funny and totally. all. Totally. He but, could kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so you have, like, did you have, a, like, a fight scene with him? Oh, yeah. 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 So what was that like? Absolutely unhinged. I just <laughs> went for it with him, and I didn't use the stunt guy. Uh, I have a little bruise from Conor McGregor, <laughs> accidental bruise. Um, it was, but honestly, I have to say he's the nicest, kindest man. Um, and Ooh. if you do want to fight with anyone, Did he was actually the person know? I had the least amount of injuries with because he's so he's good safe. at it. He's yeah. safe. He knows, he knows, he knows, how, to he knows how to punch. Yeah. 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 Are you talking about Jake Gyllenhaal, or you must be talking about Conor McGregor? Conor McGregor is the nicest dude. Fuck you. He acts that way when he's getting paid to act that way. Who the fuck are you kidding? All right, you're off the Christmas list. I was going to put you on the Christmas list of someone who got my special gallon of eggnog and my secret cookies. No cookies and eggnog for you. Connor McGregor's one of the nicest guys, you fucking lying sack of shit. Fuck you, Lucas Haas. He was actually the person I had the least amount of injuries with because he's so he's good safe. at it. He's yeah. safe. He knows, he knows, how, to he knows, he knows how to punch. punch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Lucas, come back and see us, yeah? Please. All right. Right. I love you. Yeah. Our Wi-Fi works in every room. Except for the bathroom. Daddy says that's his special meditation room with his candles and his lotion. But why do you need scented candles and Vaseline for meditation? Oh, my God. Come on, people. Have you seen the original? Of course. No, of course I have. I have to be honest. I, I mean, it was before you were born. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I you don't have to be honest. Obviously, you don't have to be honest because you just said Conor McGregor is like one of the nicest guys. And you're fucking, you're sitting in a chair with fucking Mark and Kelly, the two biggest fucking liars in the history of morning television. Shit, when I got the audition. Okay. For sure, yeah. But what a classic, <sighs> iconic movie that original is. Oh, my God. Patrick oh, Swayze gee. is. Who told you that? Your fucking publicist? What a classic, iconic movie. You just said you only watched it because you got cast in the remake and you just watched it for inspiration or Truly, like Liar. movie star of all time. Of I all got time. Of all yeah, time. Sure. He's he's such a lovely, lovely person, and also a person I looked up to growing up. I could recite Donnie Darko from the <laughs> days my mom let me stay home from school and watch movies. Wow, your mom really did a lot of. Wow, your mom really let you <laughs> stay home from school a lot. <laughs> Was there ever a time that you ever woke up to get ready for school and your mom just out of nowhere put your hand, her, her hand on your forehead and said, oh, baby, you're not going to school. You're sick. And you're like, I feel fine. Nope, you're sick to me. Get this pajamas back on. I got a bowl of popcorn. Meet me in the couch. <laughs> like you're sitting there all ready to go to school and he just she just put your, her hand on your forehead and says, oh, baby, sweetie, you're not going to school. You're sick. And you're like, but I feel fine. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me check. And she put her finger up your butthole and then would suck on the poop and go like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're sick. You have a fever. Go put those pajamas back on. Meet me in the couch in 15 minutes. Go make mama a bowl of popcorn and meet me in the couch. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, the nicest guy. Yeah, why don't you ask Taylor Swift about that nice guy? The person I looked up to growing up, I could recite Donnie Darko from the <laughs> days my mom let me stay home from school and watch movies. But, yeah, wow. just being in it. Your mom wasn't really strict with you going to school as a kid. See, parents? You want your kids to be successful and in the movies? Don't send them to school. All they do is feed your kids' heads with nonsense about science and English and math. <clears throat> Patui. Now we have tablets, computers, the internet, and iPhones. We don't need any of that stuff. Let them watch movies, and they'll become an actor. They'll pick up all the school stuff later in life through living. I seen with him. That was surreal. At to the go. University of Life. Toe to toe with Jake Gyllenhaal. And then Conor McGregor's <laughs> yeah. film yes. debut, acting yeah. debut. Yeah, like, what was that like? Because it, well, yeah. he's been here on the show. Has he? Yeah, he's yeah. great. Yeah, he's he's great, great, but he definitely, like, you.
You definitely look like his boyfriend. Just like I'm Shyler Lee. Oh, not just another dumb teen movie. She was so hot in that movie. Oh my god. I'm getting flashbacks to being in grade school and just like wanking off. I'm most proud of this is Shyler Lee. But then she joined Grey's Anatomy and got married and had kids, and it, like she went from a nine to a six. We all remember her as Lexi Gray on Grey's Anatomy. Please welcome actress Kyler Lee. <laughs> Yes, I love that. Amazing. Alice and Olivia. I love their stuff. Yes, I had to plug for a second because. So, I got to tell you that you and your husband sort of met similarly to how Mark and I met. Yes, that's what I heard. Yeah. um, This was, well, next month will be 24 years ago. Wow. Wow. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, And we met. Um, I was working on a set and I was incredibly flat chested and um, annoying and guys didn't want to date me because I didn't have money. And then I met my husband and he had a six pack and, and big brown nipples. And he was extremely, um, well, mm, what's the opposite of intelligent? Well, dimwitted is what I'm looking for. Um, Incredibly uh, box of rocks is how my mom liked to describe him. But he was a dumb meathead with a hot body. And I just wanted to have sex with him right away because I had no self-control or impulse. And I'm a little slut. And then I just said, well, if I'm going to have sex with you and people are going to know that I'm having sex with you eventually, we might as well go out. And uh, that was pretty much it. I tricked him into marrying me. And now he's my manslave. He's basically he just cleans the house all day and smokes weed. And I pay the bills. Yes, that's what I heard. Yeah. Um I tried to get a talk show for us, like on a streaming network, but when I told him about it, he goes, what is a talk show? I already have my podcast about hippopotamuses. Wait, is it hippopotami or hippopotamus? This was, well, next month will be 24 years ago. Wow. Wow. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, And we met on an audition for a pilot. It was WB back when everything was like the teen pilots. I'm sure you all know how that's right. Creek, Felicity. And um, I came around the corner and he's just kind of chilling on the ground. I was like. That's the guy I'm going to marry. Wow. And it was oh. so weird. And then when he you had know, the same, you know. You know. Yes. And then we go in. We were paired up together first. It was a chemistry read. So think about this. She already knew the man she was going to marry. And she had never met him. Didn't know what his voice sounded like. Never talked to him. All she knew about him was what his face and his body looked like. So it just goes to show when girls say that it's really important to have a good sense of humor and a personality. That's all bullshit. All they want is someone that makes their pussy sopping wet. And if their pussy gets wet at first sight, they want to marry you. Because when they're saying, that's the guy I'm going to marry, they're saying, no, no, no. That's the guy that's going to make me fucking come every time I fuck for the rest of my life. And that's all they care about. Like, oh, my gosh, I can fucking have, I could fucking soak a fucking car seat at the age of 75 if this guy's my husband. That's all. That guy makes me horny. That guy, I want to fuck that guy for the rest of my life. That's all. It's not the guy I want to marry. That's the guy I want to fuck for the rest of my life. But then she never tells that story because you know how that'll make her look. Make her look like fucking Kelly Ripa and Anna, no, Anna, Anna Nicole Smith after watching a couple Jenna Jameson and Tracy Lord's videos. Weird. And, and then when he you had know, the same, you know, you know. Yes. And then we go in. We were paired up together first. It was a chemistry read. We get right towards the end of the scene, and he's like, "Do you do you want me to kiss her? Like, should I really kiss her?" And they're just like, "I'm sitting here going, oh my god, this is embarrassing." <laughs> Right. And they're going, I'll tell you what, one. you just do whatever naturally happens. And we're like, okay. We go through, we keep, you know, I guess apparently our chemistry was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so we go through. And, and then the, the final audition was in front of like 27, you know, network executives yeah, all sure. standing in the room. And they asked me to 
pull down his pants and whip his dick out. And I had a, I had to suck his dick. I didn't know how to suck a dick, especially with 27 old Jewish men watching. So we ended up having anal sex and I blew him. And then we got the job in little, and then three weeks later, uh, the pilot got canceled because of lack of funding. Turns out it wasn't even a real project. And it was just like some big con. The cops came in and arrested these three men. They weren't even like executive producers. They were all, they worked for like a, I don't know. They worked for like a hot dog on a stick and they were just filming like undercover pornos to sell on uh, YouTube or Napster. It's, I totally yes. did. And I just stumble out and I'm like, oh God, I've never worked in the this town. We got the part. Yes. yes. And, you got and you got the man. Is that what he's going to say? God, weirdos. That's all it takes for you, huh? And Easy we still haven't kissed yet. Oh and my so God. We still have the anticipation. I know. And he's like, do you, do you want me to kiss her? Like, should I really kiss her? And they're just like, I'm sitting here going, oh, my God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> right, right. And they're going, I'll tell you what, you just do whatever naturally happens. And we're like, okay. We go through, we keep, you know, I guess apparently our chemistry is pretty good. Yeah. Right. And so we go through. And, and then the, the final audition was in front of like 27, you know, network executives yeah, all sure. standing in the room. And we still hadn't kissed yet. Oh and my so God! We smell the anticipation. I know it's like kiss because at the time he lived in California, I lived in Miami, so it really was like a, I might not see you yeah. again. So that incentive is there, and we get to that same part, and like no one's stopping us, no one's stopping us. Go for it! And he kisses me, and I got so flustered <laughs> that I was going to try to use the door as like a oh creative actor you know moment. I hit my face with the door. <laughs> It completely, it's, I totally yes. did, and I just stumble out, and I'm like, oh, God, I've never seen this town yet. We got the part. Yes. yes, and you got the man. Yes. I got the man. We're going to find out why Cole Cousin has become part of Tyler's job. Stick around. Tune in all next week on Live, when we give you a preview of the New York Auto Show. You know, in real life, as you know me in real life, I don't wear makeup. If I brush my hair, it's only under duress. So the fact that I spend my life in drag. Next live, the legendary Carol Burnett. Hey, Mom. No one's stopping us. Go for it. And he kisses me, and I got so flustered <laughs> that I was going to try to use the door as like a, oh, creative actor, you know, moment. I hit my face with the door. <laughs> it completely, it's, I totally yes. did, and I just stumble out, and I'm like, oh, God, I've never worked in this town. We got the part. Yes. yes. And you got the man. And I got, and I got pregnant. And he kisses me, and I got so flustered <laughs> that I was going to try to use the door as like a, oh, creative actor, you know, moment. I hit my face with the door. <laughs> it completely... Yeah. ...to use the door as like a, oh, creative actor, you know, moment. I hit my face with the door. <laughs> it completely incredible. It's, I totally yes. did. And I just stumble out and I'm like, oh God, I've never worked in the town yet. We got the part. Yes. yes. And you got the <laughs> This is going to be quick. And I just stumble out and I'm like, oh, God, I've never worked in this town yet. We got the part. Yes. yes. And you got the man. God, I've never worked in this town yet. We got the part. Yes. Okay, okay. Relax, 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 relax. <laughs> it completely yeah. incredible. It's, I totally yes. did, and I just stumble out, and I'm like, "Oh God!" Did you guys get laid? Yeah, we got laid. Yes, yes. and you got pregnant. And I got AIDS. Uh, Sadie, no. And did you get laid? I got laid, and you got pregnant, and I got AIDS. That's what I was. They would talk too fast. Oh, look at this, Shyler Lay. That's her last name, Lay. 
And did you have sex that night? Breastfeeding or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. With Cabinova, you're good to go. Ask your doctor about switching. I mean, there's nothing to lose now. Oh, nothing. Not after you sign that sales agreement. <sighs> I think the good ones will do right by us. You've always cared way too much about what the good ones think of us. So Evelyn agreed to keep our names out of the paper. You don't still owe her. so people understand why you're jumping in. so it's a it's a multi-generational family show it's it's kind of everything that you love and and know about hallmark uh -huh. but we kind of like elevated it a bit and we mm -hmm. kind of made it a little bit more spicy if yeah. you will right Good. a little more daring um and so it's about it's about the landry family and uh many years ago there was uh Cat's younger brother goes missing, mm -hmm. and then father ends up in a car crash. This isn't like no spoilers, don't worry. Um, <laughs> and and this rift forms between my character and Andy McDowell's character, um, and I kind of take off and leave him, saying, you know, this is my life. I'm out. And so I get this uh, letter twenty years later, and it's out of nowhere saying, you know, Kat, come home. Like, let's work everything out, come mm. home. And so I take Alice, because at this point, it's like going through a divorce, lose my job. It's like, hey, let's make a change. We go out and um, find out that there is this pond that is on the Landry farm. Alice, in a moment of being upset, goes to see it, accidentally falls in. And then we discover that she pops back up in 99 and I'm the one pulling her out, but as my 16 year old self. Wow, wow. So, so time so, travel. So it's time travel, it's love, it's drama, it's heartbreak, heartwarming, it's all of the things. Yeah. Um, and I love our show yeah. so, so. Yeah, you say no spoiler alert, but you pretty much told us the whole premise. Like, it'd be nice to like watch the show and have it be a surprise. Like, oh my gosh, she fell in the well. <gasps> it's a time machine. Now it's like, yeah, I know what's going to happen. They're going to go out to the well. She's going to fall in, and then it's going to be a time machine, and she's 16. I already know the part. <clears throat> you take away all the fun out of watching it. Now I'm not going to watch it. Um, and so I take Alice, because at this point, it's like going through a divorce, lose my job. It's like, hey, let's make a change. We go out and um, find out that there is this pond that is on the Landry farm. Alice, in a moment of being upset, goes to see it, accidentally falls in. And then we discover that she pops back up in 99 and I'm the one pulling her out, but as my 16 year old self. Wow. And those, so then Andy McDowell is like 20 years younger. So does she wear gray hair when you're an adult and when you're 16, she dyes her hair black and acts like she's, you know, in her forties, fifties. Oh, wow. so, time travel. so it's time travel. It's love. It's drama. It's heartbreak. There's a little mother daughter cunnilingus, some oral sex between me and a dog. And I love our show so, so much. Yeah. I'm so proud of what we're doing. And it takes it takes a lot for everybody to really make it as special as it is. So yeah. you have to cold plunge or you have to, I mean, I know you have to access the but first experience is, yes. in the water in the is water. the cold plunge. Is the cold I'm plunge. like, I just got to save it for that whenever that happens. Because right. it is, it's freezing. So we film in Toronto. Mm, okay. And enough said. Um, <laughs> so we start like right at the end of summer and then it transitions because we're like, it's like four months, just about uh -huh. four months of filming. And it goes we try to like block shoot any of the pond scenes that yes. we know beforehand. Get it over with. To get it over with. Yeah. But then at the same time, if the weather changes or if, you know, the seasons change in the show, like the last time Sadie and I jumped in, uh, Sadie Little Lamb Snow, who's just one of the loveliest people on the whole planet. I call her my baby bird because Aww. she's just my baby bird. Um, but so we had to jump in together and it's November. 
Oh, for and the water was fifty degrees. Yeah, and it was like yeah. it's it's breathtaking and not in a nice. Way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be a theme of the show. This is what stunt people are. After cooking a delicious Nor Farm Stand chicken cheddar broccoli recipe, you will want to close all your delivery apps and open your. For those of you that watched uh, journalist or uh, magazine editor, magazine columnist Gail Simmons. Waste our time spending fucking 25 minutes teaching us how to fucking crack an egg and to make scrambled eggs with a terrible presentation. Chef Eric Repair is going to tell you how to really make something that'll fucking improve your cooking life, that'll improve your eating, something that'll actually help you in the long term of your future and actually show us how a proper chef teaches instead of some fucking foodie that works for a magazine pretending to be a chef and lying because she thinks it's going to give her more views and trying to insult the intelligence of people to try to get them to watch her videos so she can make more money. This is a real chef. This is a fucking 10. That chick yesterday, whatever her name was, Gail, is a fucking one. Enjoy watching a fucking true master fucking teach you something. Take notes for this. Whatever Gail Simmons did, fucking wipe your ass with it. She was terrible. Money. She's a pretender, is what we call in just her. Two minutes with insurance. We call people spot. like we call people like Gail Simmons pretenders. We are continuing to live cooking shows cooking school week now with a lesson in how to make sauces from chef and co-owner of the world-renowned restaurant Le Bernardin. Please welcome back my French cousin, Chef Eric Rivera. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Okay, take us through sauces. Sure. Mark has wanted to make sauces. He's wanted yeah. to learn how to master the art of sauce. So, Mark, from now on, you're going to be, you're gonna be the, chef, the, the chef saucier of the house. Okay. Uh. So we are going to make three simple sauce. Okay. Okay. The first one will be a vinaigrette. So maybe we can work together. Sure. Okay. Mark putting some mustard here. Okay. Two it. spoons. Yeah. No, two spoons. Okay. The salt, Kelly. Yes. I'm putting the pepper. I mean, the three of us, we should be able to do. See, I thought he was just going to do the five mother sauces, which is like velouté, bechamel, tomato sauce, or tomate, depending where you're from. I forget the beef one. I want to say it's like a Bordelais sauce or some kind of beef sauce. And then, of course... Bechamel, Volute, oh, hollandaise, right? And I thought he was just going to make those. But the first thing he's teaching is a, a vinaigrette, which is not a sauce, but it's a very custom. It's a dressing. It's something. It's it's a, you know, it's not a sauce, but might as well be a sauce. All vinaigrettes are sauces, but not all sauces are necessarily vinaigrettes. We can work together. Sure. Okay. Martin putting some mustard here. Okay, all of it. Spoons. Yeah. No two spoons. Okay. The salt, Kelly. Yes. I'm putting the pepper. I mean, the three of us, we should be able to do something. Yes, right? between the three and of us. And then we are going to put some uh, vinegar. So I have some um, champagne vinegar. Mm, okay? yes. So we mix it together. Because you are French. I think Eric Repair only decided to make a vinaigrette because of his French accent. He likes saying vinaigrette. And he likes saying moustard. We don't take some moustard and make a vinaigrette for the, the salad. You have the champagne. Champagne, it could be cider vinegar, can be sherry vinegar. Any but vinegar. Like it like oh, it smells good, all right. Yeah, and then we're going to incorporate some oil. So, Mark, you, you're going to okay, pour the oil slowly, slowly, slowly. Well, that's not slowly. <laughs> like that. She's going to break the vinegar. How about now? Yeah, like, that's. You should fucking see Mark when, when Kelly asks him to eat her vagina slowly. Fucking seven seconds in, the fucking hosp the paramedics are on her way. She when she says she calls the hospital in advance. She calls the paramedics before she asks him to perform cunnilingus slowly because she already knows she's got a box full of bandages, some antiseptic, and fucking the paramedics on hold. Hello, yes, this is Kelly Ripple. Yep, it's me again. Yeah, yep, that's right. I'm going to ask my husband to go down on me. I'm going to tell him to lick it slowly. So you could just leave now. I heard traffic's kind of bad down 15th Avenue. Right past the FAO Schwartz. 
they got that blocked off. Yeah, you're going to want to take the shortcut around West Central Park. Park. So, Mark, you, you're going to, okay? West Central Park. Here, here's his oh, slowly, 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 slowly. Well, that's not slowly. <laughs> yeah. Total time to conceive all three children, five minutes and 16 seconds. I like it like this. Oh, it smells good, all right. Yeah, and then we're going to incorporate some more. Total, total time for Mark to conceive all three of his children, 71 seconds. Oil. So, Mark, you, you're going to okay, pour the oil slowly, slowly, slowly. Well, that's not slowly. And Joaquin <laughs> took 48 <laughs> seconds. He's going to break the vinegar. How about now? Yeah, like, that's now it's extremely slowly. <laughs> there you go. Fair and new one, okay, Eric. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Don't be shy. Yeah, let's go. And now I'm going to join you with this one. So, we're mixing avocado uh, oil and oh, olive oil. Yeah. Like that. And yeah, we stop, stop, stop. Okay, okay. Um, Am I doing okay? Yeah, you're doing fantastic. So we <laughs> we are going. <laughs> Hold on, you do okay. like that. Okay. Very fast. If not, it's gonna break. Oh, like yes. That. I don't want to break the emulsion. No. And then we put it in a pan. So I have I have some ready. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I chop some herbs. Okay. Chives. Uh, sure. Let me just say that Kelly is more like stirring. She's not whisking the vinaigrette. You should be whisking up and forth, back and forth vigorously. Maybe she doesn't know any better. She's concerned it's going to look like she's masturbating. So that's what you want to do with your wrist. You want it to look like you're whacking off a penis, but she's stirring it around like, I don't know, like she's mixing paints or something for like some terrible painting she's going to get. $80,000 for an auction because Andy Richter wants to support his friend while he's doing cocaine off the Real Housewives vaginas on the set of Potomac. But you want to jerk, you want to make it look like you're jerking off and you're making like a big, you know, big splurt of creamy dressing pop out of like that, you know, metal stainless steel shaft. Right, Eric? Wee, wee, wee. Parsley, uh, wee, wee. tarragon, Mix. basil. We can Does it? Wee, wee. That is correct. Wee, wee. No, 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 not wee, wee. Spooge, spooge. No, no, not wee, wee, like the pee pee you're in. The wee, wee, like, yes, yes. Not the spooge. We call that, uh, we call that batali juice. Mix it. Don't break it. Don't break it. <laughs> Chef Repair, how do you say semen in French? The, the Bobby Flay. <laughs> oh my God. No, so, so good. good. Yeah. I, wish, I wish television had a sense That's, of smell. Uh, yeah, soon. So good. Let's go make soon. Yeah, soon yeah. So then when it's when we mix it, and we put the herbs at the last minute because yeah. they will become dark with right. the acidity of the vinegar. So serve the sauce with the fish. So we, we are going to serve it with fish. Here we have a piece of halibut with mm -hmm. asparagus. So we are going to put it like that. Uh, on top oranges. Of it. You could put it on chicken. You could put it on meat. On, of course, vegetables. And uh, and voila. Okay. And it was, voilà. it was simple. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's our next? What's our next well, I do want to try. I do want to try. It. Mm. Thank you. Um, you made it. It's uh, I, oh my gosh. You uh, see, it's easy. Mm. Gorgeous. So the next one, we are going to make a chicken jus. Yeah. So chicken jus is very simple. Are there bones in there? Yes. You have that. Well, bones. this is the bones. <laughs> <laughs> They are allowed to develop their engine. They uh, they allowed to test with their uh, main riders on any tracks as well. They they got more uh, opportunity to change the aero as well. So more they, tires, more tires as well for in quantity for the for the overall testing. So yes. I'm sorry. What the fuck is going on? I have not completed it. What is wrong with that? Uh, well, the difficulties are carrying on. You know, from Qatar, and uh, yeah. it's a tough weekend so far. I don't know why it's doing this. You're going to just have to fast forward. I don't know why the fuck.
Biggest threat into turn one. So Jorge Martin not feeling as confident as you would anticipate. He always has won that pace, but tomorrow is his uh, heat beats he's got to set up, whereas Dude, now maybe not quite yeah. there in terms of his soft tire pace. Former world champion then Fabio Quattro yeah, looking a little girl, more relaxed than we know that he's been really looking at this. Is that his girlfriend? Or his daughter? Yeah. He always has won that pace, but tomorrow is his uh, heat beats he's got to set up, whereas now maybe not quite there in terms of his soft tire pace. Former world champion, then Fabio Quattro, is looking that, a little. But that girl's his daughter in the corner. Yeah. He always is what Daddy, that is, right. but tomorrow is his well, uh, a he he's got set setup, whereas now maybe not quite there in terms of his soft tire pace. Former world champion, then Fabio Quattro, looking a little more relaxed. And we know that he's been really looking at this season as, well, having to develop the bike, unfortunately, but he's also got one eye on where he's going to go next year. Will he stay or will he go? Well, we don't know that yet, um, but for sure Fabio is motivated to try and make it happen this year. He knows that uh, Yamaha's got the opportunity to do all that development uh, on that bike, on the aero side, on the, the right high divide side, to try and catch up with the with the Ducatis, the KTMs and the Aprilias. So, you know, Fabio really loves that bike. He won the World Championship with that bike. He suits his riding style and step by step. You, you... Well, that's a beautiful view. <laughs> oh my god. Smells so, so good. good. Yeah. I wish I wish television had a sense of smell. Uh, yeah, it smells so good. Let's come in soon. Yeah, soon yeah. So then when it's when we mix So he made that vinaigrette and then put it in a pot and stirred it? See, Gail Simmons don't know that. And here's the thing, when they eat the food and they're like, oh, well, you know it's a Michelin star chef, you have to have an orgasm face. Because if you just say that's very good, it's almost insulting. So that's the thing. You can't believe these two because they're liars to begin with. And then when they, they're trying – look, you know what they're also trying to do? They're trying to score a free dinner by fucking kissing his ass. Fucking Kelly's fucking stroking the shaft and fucking Mark's got his face buried in this guy's fucking fudge hole in the back. 
it and we put the herbs at the last minute because it would become dark with the sea. Mark's looking for a little dark chocolate waterfall on top of his peanut butter prairie land. So the the so we have to serve the sauce with the fish. So we we are going to serve it with fish. Here we have a piece of halibut with asparagus. Mm -hmm. So we are going to put it like that. Uh, on top gorgeous. Of it. You could put it on chicken. You could put it on meat. On, of course, vegetables. And uh, and voila. Okay. And it was voila. it was simple. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's our next? What's our next sauce? Well, you want to try? I do want to try it. Oh, oh, mm. oh, oh. Thank you. You made it. It's oh. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh. Mm. Oh, please. Oh, so the next one. Jeez. Oh, please. I'm going to let you just. Oh, God. I'm going to sit on your face as a reward. Oh, no. Thank you, Kelly. I do not like little boys sitting on my face. Beautiful. What's our next What's our next song? I do not like to have comolingus with girls that wear training bras. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Well, we want to try. I do want to try. Mm. Thank you. Um, you made it. It's uh, uh, oh, my gosh. It's easy. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. So the next one, we are going to make a chicken jus. Yeah. So chicken jus is very simple. Are there bones in there? Yes. You have that Well, this is the bones. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get the jus. This is how you make the jus. Um, we slice some shallots and garlic. Mm -hmm. Do you want to slice it? Yeah. I'll, I'll just nice. Yeah. You've got excellent yeah. no, in front of you. Don't, don't. Okay, I'll do it. Oh, he's going he's gonna to judge me. Because you... You, you just want to thin a thin right? I have terrible knife skills. You have terrible knife skills? Skill? Yeah, terrible. Okay. We've already covered this on the show. No, you were doing what? Well. I'll show you a trick. Yeah, so, go ahead. So because we need the shallots to go okay. really like this. Yeah, but I'll cut my fingers no, off. No, no, no. Your finger is guiding the blade. It's easy. Like this. Mm -hmm. Like that. Like that. Let me try. Let me try, Chef. Go ahead, Mark. Let me try that. Like this, right? Yeah, let me try. Okay. Don't cut yourself, please, because... Yet man is looking at me. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to. Okay. Look at how thick that is. That's okay. a technique. It's just we have enough. It's, it's all good. Are you I think no, I see some nail on there. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Yeah. Uh, we cook the shallots, the chicken, we put a little bit of flour, mm -hmm. just a tiny bit like yeah. that. You can stir okay. it. Yeah. Because we want the jus to be the jus. Uh, uh, rich, but not too thick. It's not a gravy. Okay. Okay. A bit of white wine, mm -hmm. like that. And then a bit of water. And we just barely, barely cover the bones. Like this. Not, okay. not too much. Okay? Not too much. That's where you're going to have like a lot of flavor. If you... Mm. If you eat too much too and then much. reduce it, it's like no, no, it's, it's, it's not water. very nice. And then when you strain it after five five minutes, you have this jus like this. Gorgeous. So the, right now it's very hot. So you just strain it through a regular. You have a, a colander, mm -hmm. and then we are going to put some of the jus on the chicken uh. like this, right? And on the vegetables because. Oh. And you can taste the jus really so nice. gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. Voila. So. The chicken is over there. The fuck was that face Kelly just made? She made a stupid joke that wasn't funny, and then she's the only one that laughed at it. And she couldn't and she gave the ugliest fake laugh ever. You can't even taste the bones. That's the same thing I say to Mark when I'm blowing him in Galman's swimming pool at his vacation home in Martha's Vineyard. He's over there. Mm. 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 Thank you. Right. And you can't taste the bones. Um, 
yourself, please, because that man is looking at me. That, uh, <laughs> Broadway in Chicago. To yourself, please, because the old man is looking at me. That, uh, <laughs> I don't want okay. the liability. Look at how thick that is. That's okay. a technique. You just got it. We have enough. It's, it's all good. Are you bleeding? I think I see some nail on there. Shut up. Thank you. Uh, we cook the shallots, the chicken, we put a little bit of flour, mm -hmm. just a tiny bit like yeah. that. You can stir it. Yeah. Because we want the jus to be the jus. Uh, uh, rich, but not too thick. It's not a gravy. Yeah. Okay. A bit of white wine, mm -hmm. like that. And then a bit of water. And we just barely, barely cover the bones. Like this. Not, okay. not too much. Okay? Not too much. That's where you're going to add. Like a little it's flip. gonna be concentrated. The more water you add, the less concentrated it's gonna be. It's gonna taste less like chicken. Yeah, and then you... Look at Mark try to finish the chef's sentence. Like he's trying to impress him. It's gonna be too watery, chef. Whoa, very good. Watery. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you go to culinary school? Who taught you that word watery? That is like what professionals say. You should open up a restaurant. Mark Consuelo say it could be called the uh, the watery cantina de mierda de miculo. Yes, the fucking shit ass water restaurant. There you go, watery. Look at you at your culinary terms. Look at you, Mark. Watery. Um, you know the lingo. You are are you master chef? Like this. Not, okay. not too much. Okay. Not too much. That's where you're gonna have like a lot of flavor. If you mm. eat too much, too much. And then reduce it, it's like no, no flavor. It's, it's water. Very nice. And then it's watery. It's watery. Great, great, great injection there, watery. That man is looking at me. That I, <laughs> I don't want to. And then he cuts himself. Let's watch him cut himself. You tell me, Chad. To yourself, please, because that man is looking at me. That I, <laughs> I don't want to. Okay. Look at how thick that is. That's okay. a technique. It's he just cut it. We have enough. It's, it's... What a fucking dumbass. Just, shut, just sit back and eat the food. Don't. This Mark's one of those guys that when he thinks he's helping, he's really hurting. Oh. Hey, I moved your furniture around, you know, so that way we could clean up for when your sister visits. Mark, my sister's blind. Yeah, so chicken jus is very simple. Are there bones in there? Yes. You have that. Well, bones. this is the bones. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get the jus. <laughs> this is how you make the jus. Um, we slice some shallots and garlic. Focus on. The brother who would break. Generation, think the loveliest thoughts. Ape, Peter Pan, is the shittiest musical on Broadway that Allison Williams should never do. We're dipping in the zoo. We're back with Chef Eric Repair. We're learning how to make sauces. What is our third sauce? We are going to make a red wine sauce for steak. Mm. So, so we have some shallots mm -hmm. that have been uh, chopped already, and they, they are uh, sweating. Mm -hmm. Because sweating, when you cook it slowly like that, color. Mm -hmm. Can you crack the pepper? And then we're going to add the, the pepper to it. Mm -hmm. Is that oh, enough? Yeah, I think it's great. You we put it here. Okay, perfect. I put some red wine and we're going to let it uh, reduce until it's almost like very syrupy. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific kind of red wine that you think it works best? Don't take the best red wine of the wine cellar. Right, right. <laughs> right. Take, take something that is... Take some out of the box and just yeah, pour it. It's right. going to be good for cooking. Okay. And then when it's very syrupy, it's mm -hmm. going to become like this, you see? Yes. And then you add a little bit of butter. <laughs> a little bit uh, oh, to make it to make it good and and, and rich. Yes. You whisk it like this, mm -hmm. and then that's it. You have your red wine sauce. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. We so can do that. Can do this that. is very important to reduce it until it becomes syrupy. Yeah. And it becomes syrupy because of the shallots have a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. 
Eric, let's talk about your work with City Harvest for the past 25 years. Yes. Yeah, why, tell us about why that's important to you. City Harvest is a very important organization in New York. Before we go into City Harvest, I have a joke. What does a French chef say when he walks into a freezer? The answer? Get it? Now back to City Harvest. Wonderful Past foundation. 25 years. Yes. Yeah, why, tell us about why that's important to you. City Harvest is a very important organization in New York. It's feeding New Yorkers in need. Mm -hmm. uh, we distributed this year almost 77 million pounds of food. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> Food pantries, lo, uh, we do some mobile markets, and uh, uh, City Harvest is the biggest food rescue organization in the world. It's food that will go to waste and that is delivered to people in need, and, and it's very important. And the need is greater now more than ever. And I, I 70% more than 2019. Wow. Thank you for doing that. You're such an Thank extraordinary you. steward for that work. Yeah, we are going to, uh, Thank you. Yeah, we are going to celebrate City Harvest. It's a gala on April 10 oh. uh, in New York, and it's our fundraising Incredible. event of the year. Well, I put it a little bit on maybe the Maybe we can put here. the information on our website, Gelman, for the City Harvest Gala, and if anybody wants to make a donation. Oh, absolutely. Or oh, attend the gala yeah, if course. we have some seats available. Of it's a course. big event. It's a fun yeah, event. Yeah, very, very nice. Can oh. I taste? You can taste. Right, you go first. You go first. If you uh, take the beef, it's a big chunk. Maybe. It's a big no, chunk. No, he's going to stuff it right in oh, his Oh, wow. Mouth. Yeah. <laughs> you know him well. I do, I know. <laughs> if that was a gentle bite, a gentle bite. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Mark is one of those people that fucking, he, he pisses me off because he reminds me of like a lot of people that are like him, where they like eating and they like eating good, but they don't know how to cook for a damn. So what they do is they find people that can cook and then they kiss your ass and fucking placate to your skills and they, they kiss your ass. They give you overwhelmingly fake compliments and they try to trick you or con you into making food for, for you. So they butter you up and then when they think they got you, they ask you like nicely. Like, oh, can you make me a uh, beef Wellington? I've never had it before. And you, 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 the pictures you have are so great. Oh, I know you could do. You're so talented. Can you, can I try it? But I want to try it the way you make it because you're such a great chef. And they think like, I'm going to go like, well, yes. Oh, my gosh. You want to try my beef Wellington? What an honor. Thank you so much for the compliment. Jeez. Can, can I do the shopping too? And you could just sit here, watch TV and scratch your balls. Sure. So I'll go do the shop. I'll spend seven hours driving, shopping, checking out, driving back, doing all the prep, doing all the cooking. And then you could enjoy it and give me your very amateur opinion. And I'll do it for free. In fact, I'll pay out of my pocket. Oh, that would sound wonderful. Yeah. No, fuck you. I don't care. And then Kelly be like, well, what if someone's starving? I'll make them ramen. If they want beef Wellington, they, I'm, I'm available for hire. But what if they don't have any money? We could work out an arrangement. That's what he, he he's a fucking scum. He's a bloodsucker, which is a fucking male version of a gold digger. It's a gold digger that isn't looking for sex or money, but they're a bloodsucker, which means they will fucking do a gold like gold digger like things to get what they want because they're either not talented enough or too lazy to fucking work for it on their own. So your foot slides into place, hands free, sketch your slipness. <laughs> The Jelly Belly does not taste like this, okay? It's all a fucking commercial. This is designed to trick you. Don't forget on Monday's show, Carol Burnett will be here. And we begin our week-long preview of the New York Potter Show. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. -bye.
natural ingredients and carefully crafted to capture the. Oh, let's see. It's another bad product. Yeah, Disney Plus. With Jews. Because you know that just because it fits in the cup holder doesn't make it to go. And you know how to break without breaking everything. And you're definitely not doing... Okay, I don't even know what this is, but you're definitely not doing that. With Allstate, you're connected to a rate based on you. Call 1-888-ALLSTATE for a quote today. U.S. Waterproofing has built a reputation for providing exceptional service and peace of mind. Because when we're called to fix a basement water problem, we get it fixed right. And we'll treat your home with the same care and attention we give our own. U.S. Waterproofing. A better basement starts with us. Experience China before communism. The life-changing performance. I'm the Shen Yun. Coming to University Park, Rosemont. Look, just because I'm like Nick Cannon doesn't mean I am Nick Cannon. And Chicago, March 7th through April 14th. Tickets at genuine.com. Why are you laughing, you hairy ass man? Look, just because I'm like Nick Cannon doesn't mean I am Nick Cannon. You feel me? Or better yet, I'd be feeling you. All right, that's it. Plug like good locks together. Be Chef playing Eric Get Tusk in the Olives and Claude Bagnaya down. Season two. Oh, what happened? Big and Oliver are oh, making progress. He's up oh, into 12th no. place as they go through turn five. Can just see from some of these cameras. Season two, also, episode one forty one. Just how much elevation change oh. there is here at Forty Mount. There's a reason they do call it the roller coaster. It is uphill and down vale. There's not really one part of the racetrack where it's flat. Maybe the front straight. Yeah, th 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 there's uh, probably a hundred meters that's flat. The rest of it is. Like, it's, it's just beautiful. It's one of the best tracks in the world. All right, thanks for watching. Like and kicking it yeah. again. But oh, God. Like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. And try these sauces at home. I bet you mess About them up. Cancer Unless you're Gail Simmons. Queen using her Kate Stein.